In this episode, we're gonna be learning about the basics of how to use a multimeter. These things are invaluable, especially for the projects that we're gonna be working on during this series. And this here is my UNI-T, UT139C. I've used lots of multimeters in my past and I've settled on this one because it is a really good device. It's good for not only low voltage work, but also for high voltage mains applications as well. Let's take a closer look at the device itself. There's a dial in the middle which turns it on and allows you to select things like voltage, amps or ohms for resistance. And down the bottom here we have sockets for the probes. Most of the time the probes are going to be in this configuration which is essentially for measuring voltage or resistance. If you want to measure amps then you'll be doing that over here. And that's the basics of how this works. There's one other thing to show you, which is very useful. And that's this button here. If we switch this up to the resistance, the ohms, and we press this button, it allows you then to have an audible alert when there is a short. So if there's a dead short, then you'll hear that beep. And that's very useful for tracing faults. So let's have a quick look at some of the applications of using this multimeter and how it could be useful for when you're trying to diagnose problems or trying to work things out with your electrical projects. So maybe we're being lazy and we don't want to go and look up the color code for this resistor. So we want to measure it and just check what it actually is. Now, all we need to do is switch this over to that symbol over there, ohms. And this here is a auto ranging multimeter. So that means we don't need to set it to kilo ohms or mega ohms or whatever it might be. We know that this resistor is in the kilo ohm range. And if it was, let's say, set to mega ohms over here, you wouldn't get a reading because it'd be way too small. It wouldn't really register. But with auto ranging, it'll actually try and find the range. It makes things a lot easier. So all we need to do is take the resistor, put the probes on either side, and we'll see it's 4.6 kilo ohms, and that makes it nice and easy to figure out. I actually know this is a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, but 4.63, that's close enough. So that's measuring resistance. That's useful for many things. You could measure resistance across various components on a circuit board if you want to find out what the resistance is. Maybe they're a bit too small to actually see. You can also measure whether there are pull up or pull down resistors across pins on devices like the ESP32. To test voltage, I'm going to firstly change these probes out because it just makes it easier to use little crocodile clip probes. So basically these things here. We need to plug this in so that we can get some power through it. Let's just plug it in there. We can see that it's powered on. And if we just flip this over, I can read the pins underneath there. Ground is up the top left. So we're going to plug that in. And we can see at the top right, there's 3V3. And to test it, we need to create a circuit. We can't just connect onto 3V3 because it's not got anywhere to go. The electricity needs to flow from somewhere to somewhere. So if I connect that onto ground, we can see that it's putting out 3.315 volts, which is perfectly fine. It's never gonna be exact. Well, most of the time it's not gonna be exact, but this is more than good enough for our purposes. So let's do this again with five volts. And we can see five volts is down the bottom here. And again, let's connect up ground and five volts and we can see there 4.9 volts that's perfectly good enough as well so one other thing to show you when you are working with your esp32 and we start looking at things like gpio which is to send signals through these pins then you're going to be wanting to test whether something is on or off so let's have a look here and let's plug into one of these. Now I know none of these are actually active, so they should be at zero. So if I connect onto there, you can see the voltage is sitting just above zero. This should actually be showing zero because this pin isn't on. 
So you have digital pins and you also have analog pins, but typically these are set to be digital. You can change them to analog. If it is digital, then it's either a zero or one, which means zero for zero volts, or one, which would be 3.3 volts, which this puts out on these GPI opens. Because it's sitting just above zero over there, that's not really gonna be too detrimental most of the time, but this is why we use things like pull down resistors, which will be connecting that pin to ground using a small resistor of about 10 kilo ohms. And I'll explain a bit more about pull up and pull down resistors a bit later on in the series, but it's good to keep in mind why you might be seeing a small voltage coming out from one of these GPIO pins when you haven't activated it. Measuring amps is a little different to measuring voltage and resistance. So first thing we need to do is we need to switch this out into one of these two sockets. Now, there are two different sockets here for a reason. This one over here has a 600 milliamp fuse, which means if you exceed 600 milliamps, then the fuse will blow and it won't cause any damage to this device. You'll just need to replace the fuse. This one here has a 10 amp fuse, which is what you use when you're working with mains electricity or anything that's over 600 milliamps or play it safe about 500 milliamps you don't want to play close to the limit now I know that what we're going to be testing is well under 600 milliamps therefore I'm going to be using this plug over here if you are unsure please use this one first and then switch over to this if you're finding that it actually is measuring quite low so we're going to measure that in that socket over there what we're doing here is, like I said, a little different to measuring voltage and resistance. What we wanna do is get the power to run through this cable and out the other cable. So that it's gonna measure how many amps are actually being passed through to the device and it will be measured on the multimeter. So let me just show you how that works and hopefully it'll make a bit more sense. Just think of it like a hose pipe. If you wanna measure how much water's flowing through the hose pipe, you need to get in between the two sections of the hose pipe to find the flow of water in that in-between section. And that's kind of what we're gonna be doing here. So here we have our ESP32 and I'm not gonna be powering it with the USB because I have no way to get in line with this to find out how much power has been drawn. So what we're gonna do is use this little device over here. This is getting power coming in from an old laptop power brick and the power is coming in over there. And this device will be able to convert whatever voltage is coming in to whatever voltage you wanna set here. So I can go quite low, I can also go quite a bit higher. I know that I need five volts to power my ESP32, so we'll just stick it on there. That's close enough all there. It's directly on five volts. What we need to do is just find where the five volts is going to be on here, and I can already see it down the bottom right. There's five volts, and we also have ground over there. So to connect this up, we're gonna use our breadboard, and we'll use the two power rails. I know that if I look underneath here, ground is green, so we're gonna put that there and power is the yellow. We're gonna plug this cable into the power rail and we're going to clip it on here. And then we're gonna pass that through this. So we're just gonna clip that on there and we'll plug that into five volts. So that'll be five volts going in. And then we still need to plug the ground into the green here. Take that, put it on that rail and we put that on green, you should see on the multimeter. There we go. So I've put a simple sketch onto the ESP32. What it's doing is it's connecting to the Wi-Fi. It's then looking for other Wi-Fi signals and then it disconnects from the Wi-Fi. So that's why you'll notice this is changing. When it disconnects from the Wi-Fi, it waits three seconds and then it tries it all again. When it's connected to the Wi-Fi, it's using about 130 milliamps. When it's not connected to the Wi-Fi, it's using about 49, 50 milliamps. So this is how you measure the amps or milliamps of the device, so basically the current. This is, of course, very useful to find out how much power your device is using. For example, if you're using batteries or you're using solar power like I am in my greenhouse. That there is the basics on how to use a multimeter. You now should know how to measure voltage, your resistance, or even your current. With what I've shown you today, it should give you the basics to actually give yourself a good head start with using a multimeter and making it useful for doing our projects. Until the next video, 
Thank you so much for watching and stay spicy. I hope that you're enjoying this series and that you're getting some value out of it. And if you are, please consider supporting me on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash chili chump. And if you sign up there to support me, then you get access to my private Discord server where there are multiple channels that you can come have discussions around anything I talk about in my videos, things like growing and source making, and of course, electronics projects and automation. So it's a good place to come and ask questions if you have any questions around automation that you're doing for yourself or anything that I've talked about in my videos. And I really hope to see you there.